Next up in chapter 10 of the phase and for the next string of videos, we'll be discussing the different techniques used when it comes to trying to influence your physiology through the phase or a lucid dream. And so the first technique he talks about is obtaining information. And he writes, information on health problems may be obtained using the same techniques used for obtaining information. And so in the last chapter, he went into great detail about these different techniques. And then several videos back, I covered it as well. So just go to my playlist, look for the words obtaining information somewhere in the title. And that's probably going to be the video. Um, he does have a bit more to say on it, though. He talks about how some of the difficulties with this is trying to ensure that the information you get is actually accurate. And then he points out how for a novice, you should be expecting anywhere from about 20 to 40 percent of the information you received to be accurate. Then as you get more experienced with the practice, then that can bump up to like 70 plus percent being accurate. And that's for um, a very good reason. And he points it out here. The very accuracy of knowledge obtained is highly dependent on how impartial the practitioner is to the information he is receiving and how confident he is that he will be able to obtain accurate information. He should not make the source of information feel pressured to say what he wants to hear. By doing so, the practitioner would choke off the flow of accurate information. It's hard for the average person to turn off habits like this without serious training as everyone is accustomed to contemplating something in the back of their mind or having some desired outcome for a conversation. And, you know, when you have that kind of expectation or maybe fear about, about what they are going to say, you're going to influence this dream character to respond back with that. So you really got to try just to like ask your question and then kind of just blank out and then just try to receive whatever answer he is, um, you know, whatever answer it is that you get. So I would think something like open awareness meditation would probably be very useful here. You know, you just try to ask your question and then just try to go blank and then just see what pops up out of, you know, the dream character's mouth. And uh, with that said, that will wrap up that one. We'll be talking about taking medicines next. Next up, we'll be talking about taking medicines in the phase or a lucid dream as a way to influence your physiology. And so he starts off this section talking about the placebo effect and how powerful of a thing that is. And he writes, the placebo effect is much stronger in the phase than in reality since all actions occur in a highly modified state of consciousness and are perceived directly. Then a bit later, he has more to say on it. In the phase, this feat or the whole placebo effect thing can be pulled off much more impressively and with much greater effectiveness, as not only may any pill be generated, but its effects can also be felt immediately. The physical body simply has no other choice when it is given a pill with, uh, with ascribed properties. All of this forces the physical body to react to the events taking place in the phase and recreate the effect in every possible way in the practitioner's real life organism. And so um, how do you do this? Well, I figure it's pretty straightforward, but I'll read to you what he wrote. The, um, the procedure for self-healing in the phase through taking medicines is as follows. The practitioner must find specific medicines or create them and then take them in the usual way. Actively try and write then and there to immediately feel the corresponding effect. It is not, uh, if it is not possible to feel the primary effect of a medicine, then the most strongly associated side effect ought to be felt. And then we'll end it off with this. It is worth mentioning one important item. It is in fact possible to still obtain a desired effect without taking any medicine in the phase. However, it is difficult for a practitioner to make his organism work in the desired way without, support, without a supporting anchor. And the whole action of taking the medicine, that is your anchor, right? The medicines themselves are what greatly facilitate the activation of the desired self-healing program by acting as the anchor, like I just said. But anyway, um, with that said, I'll wrap it up. And next up, we'll be talking about um, direct influence. Next up, we'll be talking about direct influence. And so he writes, the main difference with techniques for direct influence is that the problem is approached not through an intermediary, like taking a medicine, for example, but is instead tackled directly. This is essentially a more thorough method compared to the whole um, medicine taking one we were talking about right before this, um, a bit later. The very perception of direct influence is the key factor here. And then he gives some examples earlier on so, uh, for example, a sore throat may be warmed by envisioning a burning sensation in the throat or by moving to a hot location like a sauna. And this is something that I've been dealing with here recently. I'm sure some of you might have been able to hear it in the videos, but I've had a sore throat the last few days. And I'm not sure if this is what caused it, but what definitely made it worse was sleeping in our bedroom with the AC on. So it was like over the weekend, we had the kids sleeping in the room with us. So we got the AC, you know, not too maximum cold, but pretty close to it. 
and it feels real comfortable, but I remember waking up like partway through the night, I could tell like at the back of my nostrils where I was breathing in was getting all raw and sore. And then I woke up in like the morning morning and uh, yeah, my throat and everything was all wrecked. So it would have been nice to get, if I got lucid at that time and like went to a very warm location to the beach or to a sauna or something, that might have helped some. And then I have actually tried to use this out before. So I have a lot of like back issues and shit. So I have had um, lucid dreams where my back was hurting. I'm thinking, hey, I should try help it out. So I've always been read in, like read this in a bunch of different books and stuff like that, that you like get this glowing energy to come out of your hands and then would like put it over my back and it would get this like warm feeling. It felt nice, right? But then I woke up in the morning and my back was still uh, pretty sore. So I'm not sure how much it helped, but one thing's for sure, it absolutely didn't hurt anything. And then he has um, uh, a pretty interesting example here too. So especially with me having kidney issues, this really jumped out at me. But he points out how you can like, because you can do anything you want within the phase or these lucid dreams, right? So you can actually like stick your hands inside your body and like check out your internal organs and like give them massages and feel them out and see, you know, and see how they're doing and try to help it that way. So that sounds like something cool I should try to do. But, um, and then he closed it off just by kind of mentioning that um, this whole direct influencing of illnesses and health problems is like one of the fundamental skills of the phase or lucid dreaming practice. So, you know, when he puts it like that, I really ought to get better at doing some of this shit. But anyway, uh, with that said, that'll wrap it up. And until the next video, keep uh, your phase practice legit.